but in the first instance, we'll go here. When I'm doing, I start off the same as, as Ikkyo, so I need to have my centre roughly in front of his centre, but we're moving in opposite directions. So it's going to be here. Ha! Ah! So now, I'm here. To take this grip, I'm going to open a bit, the control's in the elbow, and do a little circle. Boom. Now he's open. Boom. And it follows the diagonal vector to the floor. Step this up over his head. Now this foot won't move. This knee's going to fit straight into his head. Neck. And the only reason I will let that off is if he's really inflexible in the shoulder, this might hurt him. It's a bit inflexible, so I'll just move it past me there. Settle it. Now from this side, I'm going to move here. Circle. There's two ways of doing this. Depends on him, really. I can lead him out, come under. This is the crude way, right? Another way you do it all with your palm. Up. So this is the same as Kodagaishi in a sense. Like in Kodagaishi, I'm gonna come in, move to the outside. This is very similar movement. It's like raising the sword. So when I'm going to step in slightly across, and this hand's going to go at the same time and grasp his wrist, going to get it simultaneously or slightly a microsecond behind. So I'm going to, as I do, as my rear hand extends, my back foot moves into the outside of his foot. So now I'm outside, outside his arm. This is inside, bam, bam, bam. This is outside, right? So, I move to the outside. I'm going to cut, same motion. Now, the more I turn towards him, the more this is going to hurt. Okay, so, first thing I do, move in. Breathing, breathe out. Breathing in as my arms go up, out as I'm applying. Um, second thing, there's lots of things he can do here. He can pull his arm back or whatever. I feel pretty good here. This is something I've made, made my own. Um, but anyway, I move here. I use, I throw, I cut back towards him. And now I'm pointing his little finger at his nose. If he turns his head and looks out the back door, I still, I don't point it now where it is. I, this spot's still the spot. Right? Once more. Ah! Here, I cut out. Circle around. And there's quite a few ways I can do that. Saito Sensei used to do it this way. Here, use it like a crank. This is good. He oh. didn't use your Jimmy at that much, but what can I say? But the same thing, um, this might be this side. So here, taking him down, kneeling here. So now I'm pinching his shoulder. I'm going to grab here. I can already start submitting it. This is in his elbow. I lean forward, go up in a U. Look how, if I come up, look how far I can go. He can roll. Now sink down, I can, I can submit him with my cocky. But now I combine that with a turn. I can take this home for dinner. Anyway, give it a go. I want to go, Shmas. But first of all, when it comes to the coin of view, the little finger pointing back at the face, while it's true that this needs to be vertical, I think it depends where it is. If he sticks his head right down, it's not there. It's in the it's in relationship to his posture. It's really more about I lock him into my centre. Once I've locked him into my centre, now I don't really care where he goes. 
have you seen this technique? This is a good example of it. Or you must have seen it. So here, I bring this over, and like this forearm is over my gut. Right? So then you're basically, you're jamming him, using your belly to um, keep him locked into your center. It's the same, but it's done under your collarbone. So just here. And it's not down here, it's not here, it's right here. And it can't be as good in the middle. Does anyone, any basic, does any, um, anybody with less than five years training know why? Well, the reason is because I'm working from my center. I can't generate much power from the middle. I can only go straight up and down. Whereas I'm moving out to this side. If I've got it on this shoulder, I can generate the power from my hips. Also, it's evasive. But getting back to connection. So I'm moving. The first connection is when I feel this touch is making connection with his wrist. This is my guide. So I have to get into position, number one. Now I've got my toes aligned, I know I'm going to get something. So here I move, it's always in my center. Still going off the line. Right? So I'm putting it here, he can weasel wherever he likes once it's on. I could have it on my navel and I can see. Right? So here. So very good, so I'm going to turn on the side, I'm locking this little bit of his finger and thumb under my um, collarbone. I'm using the convex of my pectorals to lock it in here. So it should be, other thing is concave to convex. So this shape is going to find this shape. This shape is going to find this shape. This shape is going to be locked under this shape. So now it's like there's an overhang. And the more posture I put into it, the more overhang there is over connecting to his wrist. If you see what I mean, let me move. Uh, by the time I've turned to him, it should almost be over. Now his only option is he's going to grab my feet or my balls, and I'm going to put him through here. I know once I'm at the side and I've got this grip, I know I'm getting something here, right? So he's got a few options. I'm putting it on. He can straighten his arm. Now to me, I'm going to move in, put his shimmy on him. So another one, if he tries to stick his elbow in my face, I'm going to step out to the side and crush it and crash it down. Right, so these are ways of maintaining your connection under varied circumstances. Right, now there's a lot of different ones I could do, but let's just, to me, this is the sequence. This is my sequence, right? He pulls his hand back, boom, Nikio. He pushes it out, shin. So I see those as the same technique. Um, I mean, normally Ikkyo to, Ikkyo to Hijishimi, I usually see the separate, but in particular, I see Nikyo and Hijishimi as um, the same technique applied in the different circumstances. It's uh, you can do Nikyo on a straight arm, but it's just not very good. There's a lot of room for him to resist, and a lot of ways for him to resist this, right? And he can have his wrists straight. Once I start to bend, now he's oh, now it all becomes a problem for him. Right, but I don't want to, I never, even if I can do something hard, I never do something when there's an easier way. The other thing, I'm seeing a lot of this, people doing Nikkyo's here. I can, it's never here, never, ever, ever. He can jump on my back, he can get away, he can just smack me in the face. Right, it has to be out to the side. <laughs> And I send him through. Okay, so as an Aikidoka, I never choose to be here unless I'm going all the way through. I'm not just going to stop in front of him. So here I'm going to have to take him out to the side. 
Okay, so what I want you to practice now is just get this on your shoulder, come to this position, not hard, he, he's either going to pull or push. He pushes, so I'm going to step back, put my uh, elbow over the top and I'm going to turn my hip back towards him. If he pulls his hand back, I'm going to let it bend and move into my semi -crack. So when you receive a Kaishiwaza, you know, don't look at this competition. Again, just try and feel your way through it. His job is to hold it steady for you so you can experiment with it. If you feel any pain, don't go that way. That's your instructor. That doesn't feel good. What if I move here? Okay, that feels good. What if I drop my hips? Oh, that feels better. He's going to give you enough time to feel it out. I'm not going to blab too long because it's time for the essence. So, Rama, can you on me? Right, so now I'm going to drop down and go behind. So here I'm going to drop down like doing coffee. Ah, if he still holds on to this, don't worry about it. I've got a good grip here. Ah. So Brahma puts Nikyo on me. Right here, I can go this way. Or, as he puts it on, I can transfer it to my other hand. Mind you, this takes some uh, Aikido chops to do it when it's done hard. Still holding my wrist, but he doesn't actually have Nikyo anymore. I'm going to tilt this up. Right. Ah! I might just keep it in. The whole idea of doing Kaishiwaza and the whole idea of why I did it now is it makes you very aware of how to resist techniques. Like if Rama does a technique on me, I'm not like a corpse, you know, or here, here. <laughs> or, uh, you know, and I'm like, uh, I'm like aware and I'm just protecting my joints, you know, feeling how it goes. Yeah. <clears throat> Never take too much. You know, I, well, I used to let people bend my arm onto the top of my head. And one day I ran out of cartilage and uh, had shoulder problems. So you don't actually have to take a huge amount more stretch than you need. It's probably not good. You know, take a nice stretch. Don't go too far outside your natural range of motion. But at the same time, you want to feel the flow of the technique as you receive it. If you can, um, ukemi means to receive through the body. So you want to receive it through your body channel that power that they put into you and store it, use it for yourself. Um, you know, and it's like um, charging a battery or something. You know, I'm gonna use that movement to oil my body. And it's very, um, very dependent on your partner and your own mood. And you know, if he was a dangerous person, I'd approach it in a different way, but I'd be even more I'd be moving even faster ahead of him. I wouldn't let him get on. I'd be moving to where he wants the technique, you know, to stop him hurting me, if you get what I mean. But that's a topic for another day. We'll bow off now and, uh, and time for some...